Taylor on this episode of Bondi Vet. Wow, look at you. Chris is under pressure to find a new mum for an orphaned foal. My biggest fear is that if we don't find Prelay a foster mum, that he can die. <laughs> you know, being a vet, the highs are high and the lows are low. An emotional roller coaster of a day for Kate. Max is 100% suffering. Okay, look after him. I he will. Nice I will look after him. Day. I promise you, I will look after him. Hi, buddy. What have you done? And can Lisa and the team help this gentle giant recover from a devastating injury? I'm really scared that he won't be able to walk again. You make my world a better place. <laughs> Come on, there's your girl. Hey, you going? Who is this little one? Rufus. Rufus. Hello. Hi. Say hello. Hi. At the Bondi Vet Hospital, Stephanie and Pat are arriving with their 10 week old Spoodle Rufus for his first ever checkup. Hello, you guys. Hey, hey you guys. How are you? I'm Dr. Kate. Nice, nice to you. meet you. You have got a new addition. Yes. yes. Little Rufus. Oh, he's really cute. He is. Do you he guys is. feel like new parents? Yes, very yeah. much so. <laughs> One of the best parts about being a vet is you never know what is going to walk through that door in the morning and puppies. They never get old. So gorgeous. Hmm? <laughs> Are you like a small little terrorist? Yes. yes. <laughs> Come on, let's go have a look at you. It's really cute. So let's have a chat. How long have you had him for? Just about two weeks. Okay. Two, yeah, yeah, two weeks on Saturday. First puppy consults are actually really important. Not only are they important for the owners, but they're also really important for the dogs. Let's have a look at your choppers. So what we look for at this age is misalignment, right? So if there's any actual teeth that are growing up into the gums. You got a good set of pearls on you. He does have a good set of pearls on him. I know that seems gross that I just know. <laughs> Hello, you, will, hello. You, you will smell an infection before you will ever see one. Yeah. Right. So you need to get to know what normal smells like. Mm -hmm. And they are normal smelling ears. Normal. Yeah, normal smelling ears. Yes. Yay. You know, this is the time to listen for things like heart murmurs, for problems with their guts, problems with their ears or their eyes. So this is a really important first consult. Okay, so the all important temperature check. So it's going to require all of us. You're on. <laughs> You're on hanging on to him. It doesn't go under the tongue, does it? No. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Well done. Didn't even need all the treats. Well done. You passed the test, kid. You passed test number one. Now we just have to actually give you your vaccines. Here you go, Dad. Hang on to him. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. So we're going to do his second C3. So his distemper hepatitis parvo, his two kennel coughs, and his leptospirosis and his coronavirus. So this is the biggest of all the vaccines. And if there's going to be an adverse vaccine event, it'll be to this one, right? Because we're combining a lot of vaccines together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the chicken game. We need to make sure that Rufus has a really positive experience in this space, so he has a good association. Delicious, you can't have any yet. What's that? We're good. Well done. As long as this food. Doesn't even notice. That's so what we should do it with you next time. You can just feed you. I love doing puppy consults because this is my chance to bond with the puppy. See you, gorgeous boy. Aww. He doesn't hate the vet. Come here, Rufus. Thank you. I can watch him grow up. That makes me feel like I have been with them from cradle all the way through to sometimes their graves. It's been a big day. Big day, mate. I'm going to go home. See you guys. See you guys. Thank Bye. You so much. Come on. Come on, little man. After the joy of seeing a brand new puppy, Kate's next patient is a very different kind of case. Hello, how are you? Hi. Worried owner Lana has brought in 15-year-old Max after he recently stopped eating. Hi, Max. How are yeah. you? You're an old boy, aren't you, buddy? 
So he hasn't eaten for two days. Two days? Yeah, two and a half. It's okay, Max. You're right, buddy? Not very well. Come up, Maxie. Let's go in, let's take Maxie in. I got him when he was six weeks old. He's part of my family. Well, he's lost a lot of weight since we saw him last. Do you think he's lost a lot of weight? I think it's age. Mm. He always like ate normal. Only last couple of days he okay. had this problem. When I saw Max on the schedule today and I saw that he hadn't been eating for quite a while, that makes my heart sink. Especially in a 16, 17 year old dog, um, not eating for a couple of days, lost seven kilos in a year. It's, it's a concern. It's blind, Maxie. I think he's blind. Yeah, no, he's blind. See his breathing like this? Right, see how he's like struggling to get air in? You can see his abdomen there that's moving. You right? So you hear that cough? So he's got fluid in his chest. It's like kind of having like a wet sponge and they can't actually fill with oxygen. So what's happening, he would be feeling right now like he would have asthma. Main thing, do a blood test, full blood test. If something wrong, blood test will show you something wrong. I think what Lana would like me to say is that we can do all these tests and we can do all of these treatments and that Max is gonna get better. And sometimes that is the case, sometimes that is the case. So there is some point to do a blood test. Um, we can get some clues and we can get some leads about where we actually go to from here. But Max is a very, very elderly dog. 16 to 17 years old is a very old dog. Can I get Max better? I don't know that I can. There you go, buddy. So what I'm gonna do is run some in-house bloods. They're gonna be back within the next sort of hour or so. Just help him, please. Moose. I want him to live much longer because he's a pleasure. So what we can see here is we're starting to get into multi-organ dysfunction. We've got high kidney enzymes. In fact, one of his kidney enzymes is so high that it's actually unable to read on this machine. I'm really devastated about these blood results. I can't give Max new kidneys. I can't give Max a new liver. Um, a lot of these problems, I can't make his bone marrow produce more red blood cells. So this, this may be the end for Max. So he's not very good. He's just having a little sleep. You right, Maxie? Max is a very, very sick dog. He's 100% suffering. And I'm not entirely sure right now that Lana knows how sick Max is. Okay. <clears throat> I'm really sorry. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's not going to come back from this. Honestly, I don't even know that he's going to make it the, the night. Like, he's just deteriorated today to a point like he'd all he wants to do is sleep. One of the very difficult things about being a vet is to bring up the idea of potentially putting the dog to sleep. It's a very difficult conversation to have to have. Can't do nothing. No. I feel as though that the duty that I have is to relieve suffering. And I try and see this in the most positive light as I possibly can see this, is to relieve suffering. And I hope I can do that job well. Later that day, Max was peacefully put to sleep. I'm on my way to what I'm sure is going to be a really tough situation. Overnight, a mare has passed away and she's left a foal orphan. Now, foals need a lot of attention and a lot of care, so I'm on my way there now to see if I can help. Chris is on his way to Glenworth Valley, about an hour north of Sydney. 
You poor little boy. It's okay. At the stables, a heartbroken Mia and her mother Kerry are keeping a vigil over the little orphan foal they've named Brule. This morning I went into the paddock and I discovered that our mare Buffy was lying down. She doesn't usually lie like that. And when I called, she didn't sit up and I knew there was something drastically wrong. Um, I went over and she'd, she'd passed away not long before I got there. Hi. How are you? Going? How are you? Yeah. Average? Oh, yeah, I bet. I'm really sorry to hear what's happened. Yeah, pretty devastating news, huh? Okay. I'm falling here. Wow, look at you. All right, I might get in there and just, just see how he's going and then see if we can work out a plan. Plan would be good right now. Yeah, but The moment I meet Carrie, the urgency is written all over her face. And the reason for that is obvious. Brulee hasn't had a proper drink for a number of hours. So how old is he now? Uh, he was born three days ago yep. um, and he was a very large foal, as you can see. His mum appeared very healthy, placenta was healthy, everything looked great. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was really happy with the way they were progressing and then arrived this morning and um, most unfortunately she'd had a big bleed overnight and um, we lost her. You're pretty sure that the reason she passed away was just from a bleed. Sorry, I need to ask these questions to make sure that mm -hmm. whatever's affected her isn't something that could have been passed on to him. Any time a mare dies, you're immediately concerned that maybe the same thing may be affecting the foal. If it was a virus or a serious bacterial infection, then the concern right now would be for Brulé's safety. Any small problem can become a massive issue for their health very quickly. I think that the best thing is obviously just to give him a check out now, see what sort of condition he's in, because essentially, you know, the, the clock is ticking for him, as, as I'm sure you're aware. Very aware, yeah. yeah. We need to, to find him a, a source of milk, but also a source of company and, and, and someone that can really look after him, because even though he's a big boy, he's, he's still a fragile boy, isn't he? Very. It's almost instinctive that any time you lose a mare, you immediately worry about the foal, because maybe there was a virus or a bacterial infection that could be affecting them both. The concern I have is that perhaps there is some deeper medical problem still lurking within him that could really threaten his health immediately. His mucous membrane colour is nice and pink, so he's obviously not lost any blood himself by the looks of it, which is encouraging. Let's have a little listen to any, any gut sounds here. Yeah, yeah it's all right. It's okay. Okay, we are getting some gut sounds there, but they're probably spaced apart a bit longer than I'd like. So, you know, the worry I have is that if his gut isn't turning over and isn't moving as, as quickly as it should, then he is at risk of becoming constipated or developing a, a colic there. Colic is probably the number one fear of any horse owner and essentially it refers to a whole group of conditions that cause a horse's gut to stop moving. When it stops contracting, it's at risk of developing these toxins which can then spread around their body and kill them very quickly. The last thing I want to do is just get his temperature. Okay. All right, 37.6. At the moment, his temperature's in a normal range, which is good news. But Chris is now concerned Brulé could be dangerously dehydrated. He's really seeking out a drink. My feeling is that his blood sugar levels, his glucose levels as a result of, of just that lack of milk are probably falling fairly rapidly. So really, if we're gonna get his gut moving and, and avoid any risk of him going into that hypoglycemic situation just from a lack of energy, we need to find him a, a permanent solution. We need to find him another mother because sure, milk is, is important, but he needs that company, he needs that, that nurturing that only a mother can give him and that mother has to have four legs, has to be a horse, because he needs that round-the-clock care. Yeah. So, do you have any other mares on the property that are really good mothers and, and could actually handle a, another foal? Or any that have, have lost their foals? You've only got the old girl out the front there, and she'd love to take him on, but uh, unfortunately, she hasn't had a foal for a few years, so her milk's dried up. Good boy, good boy. The fact that there's not the perfect mare on a property of 400 horses really shows you just how hard this search is going to be. 
the added pressure here is that time's ticking. We have to find a solution and find it quickly. I'd like to see if I can make a few phone calls, see if I can actually find a mare that might have just lost a foal or a mare that, that's amazing enough to, to handle two foals. It's now a race against time to find him a surrogate mum. My biggest fear is that if we don't find Prelay a foster mum, that he can die. And yeah, I, I certainly don't want to lose both of them. This isn't going to be easy. Hello? Hey, Rebecca, it's Chris. How are you going? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, good. Um, hey, a really strange request, but I'm hoping you can help me out. I'm looking for a, a mare mm -hmm. that you may have that we could loan um, that can act as a bit of a, a foster mum to a, to a foal that's just lost her mum. We've got mares, but none have recently given birth. Yeah, so nothing that really fits that. No, sorry. You wish I could help. It's a disheartening start, but with time running out for Brulee, Chris tries another local stable. I'm looking for a mare that can possibly act as a foster mum. You know what? I think I've actually got the perfect mare for you. You do have something? Yeah, and you know what? I reckon it actually might help her out too. I'll put it down to you right now. Yeah, look, that'd be incredible. Not a problem, mate. I hope she gets built. All right, we'll see you soon. See you later. Cheers. No worries. The mare I found is called Zaji, and she's actually had a pretty tough week herself. She lost her foal just a few days ago. As sad as that is, that actually makes her a perfect candidate to fulfil what we need from a mare. All right, I have some good news for you. We found a mare. She's lost her foal just recently. The foal was a little bit older than Brulee, but she's still got plenty of milk, and she's on her way right now. Yeah, great. Thank you. Right now, it's probably all too easy to get excited and assume this is all problem solved, but it's so far from that, it's not funny, because once this mare arrives, we have to make sure that she does actually accept this foal, because if she doesn't, we're back to square one. How are you doing? Sorry, I'm Chris. Steve. How are you, Steve? How did she travel? Yeah, really well. Yeah? <laughs> Chris is about to get his first look at the mare he hopes will be able to save three-day-old Brulee. Good girl. Easy girl. There we go. Feel your way. That's the way. Good girl. Now that we have a mare, it's so easy to think that it's all problem solved. But unfortunately, that is far from the truth. Been through a lot, haven't you? Yeah. Every moment of this introduction has to be perfectly stage managed because if one part goes wrong, the whole arrangement flies out the window. It just won't work. Zaji can't be introduced to Brule just yet. Yeah, it's all right. It's OK. She's agitated from the trip and needs to be walked. And Chris has an urgent job to do, starting with a bucket of the mare's urine. Brule's obviously had a pretty tough time, but this is probably the last thing you think he needs, but it could be the best thing for him. This urine will actually be used to disguise the scent of Brulee, so hopefully Zaji accepts Brulee as being her own foal. So we're essentially going to cover him in urine. Unlike us, horses use their sense of smell as their primary sense. So how Brulee smells will form 90% of our mare's judgment over whether this is her foal or an imposter. How's that? How's that? It's been a tough day, hasn't it? Hmm? They won't get much tougher than this. We still want to do that. OK. You won't want to do that after this. The next indignity for little Brulee is a liberal coating of Zaji's faeces. So I'm just trying to target the spots that <laughs> mum is most likely to smell. By doing all this, we're trying to fool her into thinking that this foal is somehow part of her, because it has her smell. And if it smells right, maybe it is right. So I think it's probably time to start to get our mare prepared for the big introduction. There are horses out there that do this for a living. They are professional foster mums. But you've got to remember, Zaji has never done this before. To minimise the risk of Zaji kicking or seriously injuring the foal, Chris is giving her a sedative. The whole idea here is to help her relax and really focus on being open to being a new mum. Yeah, good girl. 
She does it. Now that she's looking relaxed, we can lead her up to the yard, and that's where our introduction is going to take place. Yeah, good girl. Up until this point, we focused a lot on Zaji's sense of smell, but she is still going to use her eyes to look at the foal and realise, hey, that's not mine. So, we need a blindfold. Ready to roll? Yeah, we are. All right, let's go. let's go. All our plans are now in place, but really, the most crucial part is the next few minutes, because that decides whether Brulé has a new mum or stays an orphan. It's the critical moment for orphan Brulé. Will surrogate mum Zaji accept the little foal? Go right in. She's calling in. Go for it. Yeah. The real danger here is that if Zaji truly rejects Brulé, she'll let him know about it and she'll do that by kicking him. And a kick to him in the wrong place, it could be fatal. Owner Kerry knows that Brulé's future depends on the foal being able to suckle. OK. You just find it there, the one. You find it. I'm feeling very nervous because this could mean the difference between life and death for Brulé. Yeah. It's all right. He's here. Your baby's here. Okay. The baby's here. This is clearly the critical time. They're giving each other little sounds. They're clearly aware of each other's presence and there's no sign of aggression yet. It's OK. Just let him um, feel around there. It's on sun. She's drinking off the mare. Brilliant. Brulé dives straight for the udder. That sound of him suckling is right now the sweetest sound of all. Isn't she a beautiful mare to do that? It's great. Like Brulé, Kerry's had to be incredibly brave just to get through today to what we hope would be a positive outcome. Now we've seemingly got that, the emotions all become too much. Oh, God, I hope he lives. You right? Yeah. All right. Big day, huh? I was trying to have a little cry by myself, but that's all right. <laughs> an, an amazing moment. You, you could um, search high and low and not find a compatible mare, and uh, we've been fortunate enough, lucky enough and thankful enough to find a mare that um, loved him and he loved her back straight away. You're a clever boy. She's a lovely girl. He's got a really strong will to live, doesn't he? He's just... He really has. He has. Hopefully, you know, that the, those hormones of hers will kick in. Mm. Those instincts and those maternal urges of hers will, will still be going once the sedation wears off. And so this will become a lot more comfortable for her and then she'll, yeah, she'll be enjoying this. What this little moment has really shown us is that their bond is incredibly strong and it's getting stronger by the minute. So what this whole situation needs is less human time, more horse time. They're looking pretty good. Awesome. Incredibly relieved. Uh, it, it could have gone um, either way and um, it, it's great for her and um, it's even better for Brulé. Thank you so much, honestly. It's great. This day had such a sad start, yet through a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck, we brought two horses together that need each other and made us have many happy days ahead. It's my beautiful boy. Huh? It's been four weeks since Chris's emotional rescue mission to save the life of a struggling little orphan foal named Brule. Hi. Hello. Well, this is a good sight. Isn't it ever? Just absolutely inseparable. Just a few weeks ago, due to a really desperate situation, we took a big chance on a mare that I really didn't know in the hope that she would take to a little foal called Brulé. They may not be blood relations, but you wouldn't know it. She's a great teacher as well. Mm, it's, it's more than just physical. It's, it's got to be emotional as well, and then that connection Absolutely is it does. really giving him so much, so much security. And, and for her, she's, you know, she lost her foal. Yeah. So she feels complete again. Yeah. I think that's why it has 
worked so well. It has been a miracle for us. It's been very surprising and we're ever so thankful for the gift of Saji. It's, it's been amazing. What I've learned is that you're doing a great job and these guys have got it all sorted. Oh, thank you. Mm. With your help, thank you. No, I played a part, but... You played a big part. There are many more beautiful things than, than looking at that. No, there really aren't. This relationship just shows you that you can never give up when it comes to animals because out of the greatest darkness here and the depths of despair has come this incredible bond that right now seems unbreakable. Hey buddy, what have you done? 18 month old Skittles has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash in a serious condition. So this young Great Dane has come into the emergency room after suddenly being unable to use his back legs. Yeah, that one's significantly reduced. I'm using a patella hammer to check his reflexes and I'm really concerned about his back right leg. When I clamp forceps on his toes, he can't feel a thing. If we try and walk him forward, can we just see if he's got any will to use those legs? Good boy. I can see that he's got some movement in that left back leg, but in the right one, there is nothing at all. He'll be fine, dear. Devoted owners Rad and Nicole are devastated about Skittles' sudden deterioration. Are you Skittles' family? Yes. Hi, I'm Lisa. Meet you. Hi. Lovely to meet you, Lisa. Come through. Now Lisa has to try to explain what might be wrong with their precious boy. He looks to us like he's got a problem with his spine. When we pinch his toes on his right back leg, he doesn't seem to react. So to me, it's indicating that there's something putting pressure on his spinal cord, which is affecting those nerves that supply his back legs. It could be something like a slip disc. It could be that he's had like a spinal stroke. Worst case scenario would be a tumour. As I'm listing the possibilities of what could be causing Skittle's problem, I see Rad and Nicole's face just drop. They are absolutely terrified that their baby may never walk again. He's everything to us. He's like our kid. A lot of our lives revolve around him, so he's very special to us. All right, well, hopefully we can get you an answer tonight, and hopefully it's something that we can treat. If not, hopefully it's something that's going to just get better. Lisa's plan now is to do an immediate CT scan. I'm just hoping that they can fix him and um, make sure everything's OK. Mm. On three, one, two, three. There we go. At SASH, Skittles is about to undergo a CT scan. So we're giving Skittles a general anaesthetic now. We're trying to work out what's going on in his spine. Lisa has called in specialist surgeon Dr Andrew Marchewski in case the scan reveals that Skittles needs emergency surgery. The possibilities here are that Skittles has had a spinal stroke, he's got a slip disc, or worst case scenario, he's got a tumour there. We're really not going to know anything until we get this CT done. Andrew is looking for any abnormality that might give him a clue as to why the big dog suddenly can't walk properly. Just looking all through there, there's nothing really obvious that jumps out at us from this. I think we've got to go to a myelogram to be able to get a good look at the spinal cord. All stable for now. So we're going to do a myelogram now, which basically means we're going to inject a dye in and around the spinal cord. Um, we need that to highlight it to see exactly what's going on. All right. We've got a good scan here. And really, I can't see any evidence of compression in his cord by either a slip disc or a you know, juvenile tumour or anything. So I guess that's, that's good in one way because it means you know, we don't have to take Skittles to surgery. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's bad because I guess we're really left with a diagnosis of spinal stroke. Oh, no. The results of the CT show that Skittles has spinal stroke, where part of the blood supply to that part of his spinal cord has been affected, causing his back legs to become paralysed. 
It's a heartbreaking diagnosis and there are no guarantees of a full recovery. The longer he goes that he doesn't get feeling and he does get movement, the worse his chances are that he's ever going to get that leg to work again. This condition can be quite devastating because it often happens in young, large dogs. Now, there is no specific treatment for this condition and there is a chance that Skittles may never walk again. It's been 12 hours since Skittles was rushed into Sash after suffering sudden paralysis in his back legs. I'm still really concerned about Skittles because he's a big dog. He's got one leg that's totally useless, one leg that's really weak. It's got to get a lot better before he's, he's got a chance of ever getting up again. The young pup has suffered a spinal stroke and Andrew needs to speak with owner Rad about treatment for the Great Dane's serious condition. Uh, so look, just as we discussed last night, um, the most likely thing we're dealing with is a spinal stroke. The bad news is the chance of Skittles getting full use of his right hind leg back is, is really only about one in three. And that's not great odds. Yeah. This right leg could be months before he yeah. can use it properly. But it might also be never. And I guess the sooner we see some improvement, the more confident I'll be that he'll be able to use that leg. But the longer it takes, the sort of more pessimistic I'm going to get. All right, well, I think um, we're going to visit. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's never great telling an owner that a, their dog's only got a one in three chance of ever using that leg again, but that's just the reality of it. Um, and, and it's just going to be a waiting game, and that's going to be a really hard waiting game for him and me. Oh, Hi, buddy. Don't, don't try and do too much, oh, big fella. Hello, buddy. Oh, buddy, I'm really scared that he won't be able to walk again. I really hope that that's not the scenario and we're trying really hard not to think about that scenario, but we will do everything we can to make him comfortable and make sure that he's well looked after. Everyone is trying to stay positive, but if Skittles doesn't regain use of his leg, Andrew knows the next option will be heartbreaking. The harsh reality is that it's quite possible that we may have to amputate Skittle's leg, and that would be quite devastating. Hey, we'll get those legs moving, see what you can do. So we're walking Skittles around to try and get his legs moving again. It's all part of his physical therapy, part of his rehabilitation. We really need to start training those muscles to work again. Come on, let's go see Skittles too. Today, owner Rad is bringing in a special visitor. Hey, there he is. hi, how Ciao. are you? It's Skittles' sister, Soda. Oh, Skittles, your family's here. Hey. hey. Soda's been very lonely at home. She's been sulking a lot. So today was the first day that I saw a little bit more excitement in her since Skittles left. All right, let's show Dad what you can do. He's a clever boy. The visits are really good for Skittles. It keeps his spirits up and it reminds him of home. So that sort of thing is what's going to get him going. He does have some sensation and some movement there. And obviously there are no guarantees that down the track it's ever going to be completely normal and we're going to have to give him time and physio and nursing care and the rest is up to him. Come on, buddy. Oh, you're doing so good, aren't you, buddy? Our worst fear at the moment really is that uh, he's, he's going to need that leg amputated. So we are worried about that, but we'll do whatever's best for him. All right, I think we better get him inside, give him All a little right. rest. I think so. OK, so visits are welcome anytime, and we're just going to continue with the rehab and the physio and fingers crossed he just Lovely. You guys are doing such improve. a good job. Thank you so much. It's fine. It's what we're here for. All right, buddy. Mwah. I'm seeing some progress in Skittles, but he's still got a long way to go. This is going to be a very lengthy recovery period, and there are no guarantees that he's ever going to use that leg again. Hey, we're going to do some rehab on you. Two weeks of intensive physiotherapy with spinal stroke patient Skittles is finally starting to show results. 
We're so lucky here at SASH to have Rebecca, who's an animal rehabilitation specialist, working with Skittles every day. She's performing exercises with him to strengthen up his muscles and get those legs moving so that eventually he'll be able to do it on his own. So, let's go, mister. The brave Great Dane has been undergoing daily rehabilitation. Good boy. And if he can get through today's session, he'll be ready to leave SASH. Come on, mister. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I mean, when this dog came in, he couldn't even stand up. And now he's walking and I think, wow, this boy is definitely ready to go home. I'm so proud of you, mister. We're really pleased with the progress. Um, it's by no means over and I don't think it's going to be an easy road, but we're really hoping that uh, he's going to have a full recovery. Yeah, you're running. <laughs> Look who's there. <laughs> when Rad and Skittles finally see each other, there are just slobbery kisses all over the place. Oh, he's so excited to be back with his daddy. All right, so you're all ready to go with all the rehab yep, at home? Yeah, we've got everything set up. Perfect. We've got uh, a nice bed for him. Excellent. And uh, I think we're good to go. Great. It's been a crazy last couple of weeks, but I think having Skittles home is going to make both Nicole and I incredibly happy. All right, Skittles, let's get you out of here. Hey, bud. All right, well, he's, he's going out. There's no more me um, teaching him how to walk. He's taking me for a walk. Come on, let's go. Skittles. Let's go. That is progress, huh? It is. When the dog walks the vet, we know he's come far. Rad has been so patient with Skittles' recovery. I don't think he quite knows what he's in for once he gets home with this big dog who needs a lot of rehab. But he's a dedicated owner, so I'm sure he'll manage. Good boy. That's a, that's a good boy. Gonna go for a run, buddy? And three months after Skittles suffered a debilitating spinal stroke... Go on. ..the Great Dane has made a remarkable recovery. We were told there was a 30% chance of Skittles being able to walk again or get any function back again, let alone uh, walk and run around. And he's improved so much out of sight that we couldn't have asked for anything more. Go on. Go get it. He's such a strong dog and he's so determined. We really hoped and knew that uh, things would be better. Go on, buddy. Soda and Skittles are very happy together again and uh, Soda's very happy to have her friend back, so it's great to see them both together again.